from est to west, railways have always been essential to construct and erect cities all around the world, especially when you're the second largest country in terms of area. Today, you'll discover if the Canadian National Railway, also known as the CN Company, is one railway on which you can roll on the road to success. In this video, I will share with you my full stock analysis on the CN Company to see if it is currently over or undervalued. As always, I'll start by going over the business model of the company, so how are they able to generate their income? And after, I'll make a full fundamental analysis on the company to finish by a price prediction with multiple valuation methods. But now, let's see what the Canadian National Railway is. Connecting the Atlantic and the Pacific by passing by the Gulf of Mexico, this company has over 20,000 miles or if you prefer 30,000 kilometers of network span all around North America, and it's currently considered as one of the largest railway companies in the entire world. In fact, since its creation in 1919, where it was a big merger of multiple companies in the railway sector which were in bankruptcy, well, since that point, it has seen a massive growth over the last couple of decades. However, the road of success hasn't always been a smooth road for this kind of company. And this was mainly created by the debate and the controversy about the nationalization of this company. Indeed, since this big business was initially created as a big merger of multiple distressed companies owned by the Canadian government, well, obviously, the biggest part of the shareholding was owned by the government and it took them over 76 years to make this company private in 1995. At that point, they have already expanded the scope of their different operations from the acquisition of multiple companies all around the west of Canada and the north of the US. And over the last couple of years, they have also made many and multiple different acquisitions, mainly in the US, where they have notably bought the Illinois Central Railway, as well as the Wisconsin Central Transportation Company. I'm starting to think that they are playing Monopoly. But all of this has helped them to gain a massive reputation worldwide as being one of the leaders in the transportation field in North America. Indeed, with a current valuation of over $100 billion and some past revenue in 2021 of over $11 billion, well, it currently ranks as the seventh largest railway company in the entire world. And since the beginning of the year, it has been one of the few stocks that have been able to have some positive momentum. In fact, during that period, they have been able to gain over 10% of valuation growth. And through time, they have been able to adapt themselves as being one of the leaders in the transportation of people at the beginning of the 20th century. Because as you might know, at that period, many different people didn't even have access to cars or any kind of transportation vehicles. And now it has become a major transporter of different resources all around North America. Indeed, with a team of over 24,000 railroaders, they are transporting annually over $250 billion worth of goods which are obviously coming from different business sectors, ranging from resources products to manufactured products to consumer goods. On its side, CN also owns many different other subsidiaries that are not linked with the railway sector. For example, they hold multiple radio and telegraph companies, as well as multiple hotels that are well welcomed by the different travelers that are exhausted after their big trips. Another important fact about this kind of company is that CN is actually a member of the Canada Top 100 Employers. This is showing that this kind of company is not only a big profitable company, but also one that is taking care of their different employees. So as you can see, the Canadian National Railway has an important and a super interesting business model. And it's also a pretty essential service because until we will have some flying trains that will transport all the different goods that we will need, well, they will still have a massive needs on that side and on the transportation side, even through throughout recession times. However, in valuation terms, is this company worth your money? First of all, as you can see, this company worth a whopping $116 billion at the moment, with a pretty fair price to earning ratio of 
only about 23 and as you can see they have some insane profit and operating margin as well as some great return on equity of about 22 percent over the last 12 months you can see that they have had some revenue of about 16 billion dollars and for their last quarter of 2022 we can see that they have had some increase in the revenue of about 25 percent fortunately for their earnings we can however see that they have been diminishing of about less 13 percent compared to the same period last year one worrying point about this company as well is their lack of cash only about 400 million dollars compared to their massive debt of more than 15 billion dollars despite that you can see that this company is way less risky compared to the average market as you can see by the beta and the beta is a great indicator on the five years period in that case to see what is the risk of a certain company versus the risk of the overall market and in that case since it is less than one it means that it is less risky than the market and on one year we can see that this company has been able to achieve a great three percent of return compared to the average market that has been down of about 13 percent and the last good news about this company is their great dividend yield of close to 2% at the moment. But they also have a super great payout ratio of only about 37%. And for those that doesn't know, the payout ratio is basically the percentage of the net earnings that the company is using to pay the dividends to their different shareholders. And since that payout ratio is super low, it means that this dividend is very sustainable on the long term. In terms of the revenue, we can see that over the last three years, they have been able to increase their total revenue, which has led them to have been able to increase also their total net income. And over the last three years for their cash flow, we can see that they have been also able to increase them, which has led them to see a great increase in their total free cash flow. Now for the price prediction of this company, I'll be using as always many different valuation methods, starting with the Peter Lynch valuation method, where you just have to add the future growth of the earnings per share plus the dividend yield that you come and divide by the price to earning ratio of the company and with the current valuation of this company we can see that the result is pretty positive about 1.21 which would mean that this stock would be pretty much fairly valued at the moment Unfortunately, for the dividend discounted model, we won't be able to use it in that case because the model won't work if the average growth rate of the company is bigger than the weight average cost of capital. And for CN, it is presently the case. And finally, for the discounted cash flow model, you'll be able to see that once again, we are starting by calculating what is the weight average cost of capital. You can start by calculating what is the cost of debt after you find the cost of equity to find after the cost of debt and equity, which is giving you your weight average cost of capital which is in that case of about 6.15 percent as it's saying it in that model you're using the cash flow to value what is the present value of the company so with those cash flow you can calculate what is the enterprise value of the company so after you can add all the different variable to the spreadsheet and at the end of the day you can find that the intrinsic value of this company at the moment is of about 173 dollars which is slightly slightly higher than the current price meaning that this stock would also be undervalued at the moment with this evaluation method as you've been able to see in this video cn is a quite interesting and important company that has seen some massive growth over the last couple of months which is quite rare compared to the average market performance if you're a dividend investor looking to invest in the best dividend companies that are offering the highest dividend income but that are also offering some dividend that are sustainable on the long term well cn could be a great option in that case for you especially because the different financial metrics at the moment are showing that this stock is currently undervalued. But on your side, if you prefer to find another great sustainable company that is pretty interesting to take a look at at the moment, well, you can take a look at the video that's going to be right over here that shares with you a great stock analysis on Bell. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to join the North family by subscribing to the channel for only $0.0, .0 and I will see you soon. Peace!